Welcome to Broke with Audio Foul Taste, my channel where I talk about records. Today I'd like to continue with episode two on my series of record mastering engineers, uh, record cutting engineers. Uh, today's going to be Kevin Gray. Kevin Gray, uh, probably my favorite uh, record cutting engineer, mastering engineer, whatever the best uh, term is. Um, there's a handful of people that are thought of as the best. Uh, Kevin Gray, Bernie Grundman, Chris Bellman, uh, there's probably a few more in the list. Uh, for me, I think, when, at least in terms of stuff that I have in my collection, uh, I think he's my favorite. Uh, his, his, his combination of, of skill, ability, uh, and uh, his mastering chain, his all tube mastering chain, um, he just makes the best for me, even though the others I mentioned also made some of the, some of the best records that I have too. <clears throat> so Kevin Gray is perhaps best known uh, for his uh, jazz. I'm not going to focus too much on jazz, um, but he does, I believe, all of the uh, Blue Note Classic series reissues. These are just so wonderful. Um, I'm just, I'm not a jazz guy. I've got several more of these. Um, and, uh, you know, jazz can be great, uh, but I'm a, I'm a rock guy. Uh, and so I'm going to focus on the rock here. Uh, I'm going to start with what I think... But for me is my crown jewel of uh, my Kevin Gray Mastered Collection, which is this, uh, I think it's a 2010 reissue uh, from uh, Drastic Plastic of the first Clash record. And it is just a stunner. It is the kind of thing where you drop the needle uh, and that uh, the snare drum comes in on uh, Janie Jones and you cannot believe what you're hearing. Uh, this is a record I thought of as being poorly recorded, not all that great and uh, sonically, and Kevin Gray turns it into a, just a complete masterpiece. It's awesome. I love it. Um, yeah, can't, can't speak highly enough of this. Drastic Plastic, uh, can't say that I know a ton about the whole situation there, but that's a, it's a record store in Omaha. Uh, and uh, at least for a while, uh, they were also a record label, uh, putting out a lot of, a lot of punk stuff, um, including that. So they also put out the second record, uh, Give Them Enough Rope, uh, also just stunning. It's just, you've never heard it like this before. It's so wonderful. Uh, Kevin Gray cut. <clears throat> the Dam's first record. More of the same. Uh, uh, running out of superlatives but uh, just, you've never heard it so good. It's just so great, it's so delicious. <laughs> uh, love it. <clears throat> what else do we have from Kevin Gray? We got the 25th anniversary reissue of Bob Mould's workbook. Um, I, my impression is that this was cut from digital. Um, it sounds really good, but it's one of those things where it's like, well, this is good, but it's just, it doesn't quite get all the way there. Um, so the original of this is good too. This was, the original of this was a direct metal mastering cut. Um, I think that also sounds good. I think this is, this is on par with the original. <clears throat> and uh, another Bob Mould record, the Kevin Gray cut, Beauty and Ruin. Uh, the last several Bob Mould records have been cut at Chicago Mastering Service by Bob Weston and others. This one was Kevin Gray. Ah, uh, yeah, the first two, the first two Muffs records cut by Kevin Gray. More kind of like stunning, revelatory stuff. You know, if you only know this from CD, which I did. Uh, you hear this stuff and you just can't believe that uh which you, you know it's it's like getting into these albums for the first time you can't believe that something could sound so good uh this one this one is drastic plastic this one is omnivore uh i believe they came out at a similar time 2016 2017 uh for whatever reason they're on two different labels but uh, both cut by kevin gray and both sound absolutely wonderful I mentioned this in the other video. This is the, the 25th anniversary reissue of R.E.M.'s New Adventures in Hi-Fi. 
Uh, again, I think this is similar to the Workbook 25 that uh, I think it's cut from from digital, and uh, I think Kevin's mastering prettys it up as much as it could possibly be prettied up. But I think there's there's just the limitations of that of the source material. <clears throat> Wilco, a ghost is born. He did the original cut on this, I believe. This is this is this is the original issue, I believe, from 2004. Um, and you know, again, no way this is this is a fully analog thing. Uh, but Kevin Gray makes it sound as as good as it can sound. Another one I mentioned in another video. This is the Rhino reissue of T Rex's seminal 1971 classic. Uh, electric uh, electric warrior cut by Kevin Gray at coherent audio from the original analog master that's how you that's how you say it and this is how it's supposed to sound it's awesome I've never heard the the mobile fidelity version but what I think is interesting is that the mobile fidelity version d doesn't say original master recording across the top I'm pretty sure I think it just says mobile fidelity sound labs across the top that implies that they're using that is from two different tapes that the one that Kevin Gray cut from says the original analog master uh, and so I think, I think it gives the, the impression that, uh, that mobile fidelity cut from something else, but I never heard it. Uh, Black Sabbath Paranoid. Uh, this comes from, uh, the, the Rhino reissues from 10 to 15 years ago. Um, and, uh, this one didn't have the same hype sticker as the other one. The other ones, uh, were ver very specific about cut from the original Analog Master. This didn't have that sticker. But I, I do still take this to be cut from the original Analog Master because it just sounds too good to, to not be. Um, so, uh, and, and this is before, this is, um, I got this right when I got back into record collecting and I didn't really know how to handle, how I wanted to handle, um, um, whatchamacallit, uh, shrink wrap and hype sticker and all that. So I wish I had left all that on. But anyway, <clears throat> great sounding. Kevin Gray cut on Black Sabbath's Paranoid. Um, yeah, Rhino's Talking Heads reissues are just stunning. Uh, Chris Bellman did the other two. Kevin Gray did, um, they did the, the first four albums, and Kevin Gray did the first album and the fourth album, uh, and these are both unbelievable. Um, I, get, I wish I had more superlatives, which I had, you know, because it, it it tends to be kind of meaningless after a while the more you just say unbelievable and great and stuff but uh, these are just you can't imagine these sounding better you really can't um, but especially remain in light it's just stunning the the separation of instruments you know because there's so much going on in that in that album and Kevin Gray's cut uh, just reveals all that beautifully uh, this was, I thought was fascinating this is kind of a blast from the past so I got a sticker here uh, Ten ninety eight, ten dollars and ninety eight cents for this record. Once upon a time, uh, this is new pornographer's second album. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna go through all that. I'm not gonna take it out and everything. But uh, Kevin Gray cut. What else did we got here? Oh uh, yeah, I popped Miles Smiles in here. I wasn't gonna talk about jazz too much, but um, this is one where I just I really wonder what this was, was what it was cut from because it sounds great. I've seen Kevin Gray talk in videos uh, about other albums that he cut from tape and then was disappointed that it wasn't pointed out on the hype sticker or anything like that. Sometimes I wonder if labels do that because they don't want to devalue their other products, that there's that there's all analog stuff out there that they don't want to say that it's all analog because it'll make the other something else they're trying to sell look not as good. Um, so that's another thing to kind of factor in when you're trying to figure out the mastering. In any case, this sounds great. I'm probably going to get, I saw that uh, Mobile Fidelity is going to put this out uh, as a 33. I'm probably going to get that too. Because uh, this is one of my favorite Miles Davis albums. Uh, Kevin Gray did um, all of the uh, Sundays, I think this is Sundays, yeah, Sundays uh, mono Bob Dylan stuff. Uh, all the early albums, everything up through Blonde on Blonde, or no, everything up through John Wesley Harding. Uh, Kevin Gray did. Um, it could be that you have to look out for other people who did cuts. I know that's the case with the birds, who I'll talk about in a minute. There's a Kevin Gray cut <coughs> Sundays, and this is also a George Ingram cut Sundays. Uh, and uh, not that George Ingram is horrible by any means. He's 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 good at what he does too. But the Kevin Gray stuff is that's the shit. Um, so I've got all those. 
and uh, and I much pref I much prefer listening to those than the, the you know the 45 RPM uh, MoFi stuff, which I have a lot of, but it's just a pain in the butt. Uh, so here's the birds like I'm talking about, um, you know, cut from the original Columbia Records Analog Masters, right? Kevin Gray. Again, you got to really pay attention to who did the mastering because there's different versions of them out there. But that's the Sunday stuff. <clears throat> Kevin Gray did that Kinks Mono Box. Um, would have been good for me to research that beforehand. I'm not sure what he cut from for the Kinks Mono Box. They sound awesome. Uh, it's everything up through. Uh, uh, Village Green Preservation Society, I believe. Uh, everything up, to, like I think Lola is is the first, um, is the first stereo album uh, that's not in this. <clears throat> but that's awesome. Glad I have that. Ah yes, for me this is the definitive version of Yes is Fragile. I know there's the MoFi One Step out there. There's probably other ones that are great out there but this was like you know 25 bucks and uh it's you know tip on jacket kevin gray cut it's fucking awesome like get this if you, if you still can i haven't really looked to see what the availability is uh kevin gray cut uh built the spill reissues several years ago these i think are <clears throat> mostly sold out i think they're going for a lot of money i only got uh these two albums I gotta admit, Built to Spill has still not really done it for me. I, I listen to these uh, once or twice a year to think like, okay, maybe I'm ready for these now. And I just, I just don't get it. They're not bad, but I just don't get that excited about them. And there's also kind of dubious language on here. All back in print on vinyl, all analog recording, right? Uh, but you know, when you look at the details, it talks about uh, mastered by Howie Weinberg at Master Disc in New York, and then Kevin Gray cut it. So that strongly implies that Kevin Gray cut a uh, cut from a, a digital source from that from that Howie Weinberg presumably digital master from years ago. Uh, I, I do remember these sounding really good, uh, but I just haven't gotten that into them. Just mostly just mute for musical reasons. Uh, okay, so last one here, uh, the most recent reissue of I pronounce it Sufjan Stevens. Uh, don't know how it's actually pronounced. I don't really talk about him that much or hear people talk about him that much i've always just kind of liked this record uh, he can he can be a, a little a little over the top and stuff but uh, i don't know it's, it's good uh, i'm pretty sure this is from a digital source but it sounds really good okay so that was a a, a look at, at the rock side of kevin gray uh maybe my favorite mastering engineer uh that's a that's a sampling of, of just some awesome stuff that i recommend uh that you get if you don't have um all right thanks a lot for watching See you on my next video.